Assalamualaikum and hi. Alright, so today I would like to share about pressure variation with elevation. So, uh, if you still remember, in the previous lecture I mentioned about um, the introduction on uh, fluid statics. Okay, so in fluid statics, the fluid is not moving. Okay, so one of the parameters that is uh, normally uh, measured uh, in fluid statics is pressure. Eh? So, so you need to know how to measure pressure. Okay, so last time I mentioned about pressure at a point uh, where pressure is the same in all direction. Okay, by using Pascal's law. So today we are going to discuss on pressure variation with elevation. So pressure variation with elevation. Um, so what is elevation? So basically, uh, elevation is the vertical distance from uh, a vertical height from a certain datum or reference point. So elevation can be positive or negative. Okay. So let's say you have uh, a bird here, and you have a hill. Okay. So you want to measure the the bird uh, elevation from the top of the hill. So the top of the hill should be your reference point. Okay, z equals to zero, and uh, as you go up, z increases. Okay. So therefore, you have z uh, of the bird. Okay, the elevation of the bird as let's say z one. Okay, and then if let's say you choose this as your datum and you want to measure the um, the elevation of a person that is uh, standing on the ground. So you start from here, since z equals to zero, you are going down. So elevation can be positive or negative. Okay, whereas um, height, eh, height cannot be positive, uh, cannot be negative. Okay? Another term that can be used to measure vertical height is altitude, but as altitude is measured from the ground you know, or from the, the earth surface. So in pressure variation, normally we use the term elevation. Okay, so as you can see here. Uh, today we are going to uh, I'm going to derive an uh, the uh, one of the equations that can be used to measure uh, pre piezometric pressure or piezometric height. So if you consider here, this is a fluid particle that has cylindrical shape. Okay, so this fluid particle uh, is slanted at a, a certain angle here, yeah. alpha. Okay, so this side should be uh, lower and okay. this should be higher. Okay, let's say we take this as our datum, z equals to zero. Okay, so go up, elevation increases. Okay, so one of the, in one of the side eh, or at one of the sides, we have pressure force P times area. So pressure force uh, is, um, is perpendicular to the uh, area eh, of the body and towards the body. Okay, so in this case, the fluid particle is the body. And then on the other side, you have a P plus delta P times area. So why delta P is because of the change in the pressure eh, as you go, uh, as the uh, position of the another side here is uh, higher than another side. Okay. And then we also have weight, eh, weight of the fluid particle that is going down. So we take the component here, weight sine alpha, okay, going to this side. Okay. And I do the summation of forces in L direction. So why uh, L direction? So the direction of the, uh, the direction here, eh, L, okay, this direction. Okay. So and I also take uh, this direction as positive. So therefore, P delta A is positive, while P plus delta P uh, times delta A is negative because it's going to the other side. Okay, pressure force must be towards the uh, body. So minus delta uh, P plus delta P area minus weight sine alpha equals to zero. Okay, so P and P can be cancelled. So what you get here is negative delta P delta A minus weight sine alpha. So this weight, I want to replace with gamma times volume. So how do I get this? If you still remember in lecture 2, I mentioned about specific weight. So specific weight is weight divided by volume. And then uh, I don't want to use volume, I want to use area because given is in area. So area times distance or L 
you get volume. And for the sine alpha, uh, sine alpha okay, so you can see here, sine alpha is basically delta Z divided by delta L because delta Z is this distance or this uh, vertical height, okay, from this datum. And L is the length of the uh, fluid particle. So I replace everything into this equation. I get negative delta P delta A minus gamma delta A delta L delta Z delta L equals to zero. So this can be cancelled, cancelled. So I continue on the left side here. So I divide everything with delta A. So I should get here negative delta P minus gamma delta L. Sorry, delta Z. L has been cancelled. Okay, so I rearrange here. I want to make it a positive. So delta P. So I put delta Z here. Okay. And this should be this. Okay. So delta P divided by delta Z equal, equal to negative uh, negative gamma eh? so set the limit of delta z approaching zero uh, therefore i get delta p delta z equals to negative gamma or you can also replace with negative rho g eh? so this statement shows that any change in the elevation delta z will cause a change in pressure delta p provided that the density is constant Okay. So remember the term that we use if the density is constant, which is incompressible. Okay. So as I mentioned in this uh, in this uh, course, we only study about incompressible fluid. Okay. Later in fluids two, you will learn about compressible fluid. Okay, and then I want I don't want to to um I don't want to let this uh remain in differential form. So I integrate, okay. I integrate both sides. I should get p equals to negative gamma z plus uh, a constant. I rearrange p plus gamma z is equal to a constant. So this expression is called as uh, piezometric pressure. is measured in Pascal, okay, uh, and it's a constant. And if you want to express eh, uh, pressure in in meter, sometimes you can also express pressure in meter. It's called head. Eh? So if you want to express piezometric pressure in piezometric head, which is in meter, you just divide with gamma or rho g. Okay. So you get in meter. Okay. So these two will, um, will be discussed uh, in further details in uh, our online class okay so thank you